Hello everyone, my name is uh, Theodore Ryan Lewis Lawrence, but call me Teddy. And I'd like to start off with a little excerpt that I heard from uh, Jerry Seinfeld one time. He said that the number one fear is public speaking. The second one is death. So for the most part, people are saying that they'd rather be in the box than the one giving the eulogy. I want, I'm gonna go into the second part though, not the public speaking, because I'm already dealing with that fear now. The second fear I'm gonna get into is understanding death. And why is it so unreal? Because most of the time, we have to accept that we are going to die, all of us. Statistically speaking, 100% of people aren't, aren't going to make it in the end. But why does that seem so bleak? Why is it a dark, dark thing? I feel like it's because we don't understand. And as a result, I'd like to illuminate my personal insight on why I believe death is the way it is. But I'm going to start with, what does it mean to die? And that really depends on who you ask. If you're going from a textbook definition, uh, Dorland's Illustrated Medical Dictionary, the 31st edition, defines death as the cessation of life, the permanent cessation of all bodily functions. Essentially, once your body stops, heart stops, it's over. Whereas Ben Franklin once said, some people die at 25, but aren't buried until 75. Well, you know, if you ask me, it sounds like a mortician really backed up on work and should get on it. But, Realistically speaking, I think he's referring to the spirit dying, one's personal will. And to go more in depth, let's first talk about the body. The body is our physical makeup. Arms, legs, eyes, ears, nose, mouth, everything that's there. And it's where you get your standard version of death, when these parts stop working and that's it. But the question is, why do we get afraid of death? As it seems like when we're first born, we're young, we're vibrant, we're excited about everything. Everything's new, everything's interesting. Why is the stove hot? Let me touch it. Oh, I burn my finger. It's an experience, and we cherish all those moments, even though they're not all good moments. But as we tend to age, we realize that we're having less and less opportunity to experience things. And as a result, we end up being a threshold where we feel like we're no longer living, but we're dying. And because of that, I believe that's why a lot of people are born into or adopt a faith that gives them belief that there's an afterlife for their spirit. And there's our spirits. They're essentially the essence of our character, our morals, our virtues, our values, what we, what we believe. And the New International Webster's Dictionary Thesaurus, you know, 2006 edition, defines the spirit as the part of the human being character by intelligence, emotion, will, the mind. So, in my opinion, that's our consciousness. It's what we consider us. And CBS News did a poll on people that asked them what they believe in. And what they said was that at least 66%, that's two-thirds of Americans, believe that there's, an, that there's an afterlife of some kind. And as a poll can't really tell us if it's fact or fiction whether or not there is an afterlife, that's something we kind of have to wait to see. So, to kind of recap, death can happen in more than one way. Illness, age, injury, and loss of spirit. It can be the loss of your will, character, your original self, who you were at some point in your life. And I think that's what we really have to consider. Do we want to allow ourselves to be concerned about that, that, that ending, that moment that's to come, or should we just embrace the moments that we have? That way our spirit doesn't die before our body has a chance to catch up with us. And with this final thought, I'd like to leave you with this excerpt from a woman who actually technically died and came back to life. And this is what she had to say on it. You don't know when the experience will end, and you certainly can't measure that by time. So appreciate what you have, and be good. But don't be afraid of what's to come. Please take my word for that it neither life nor death are scary. Just ground yourself in your own little bit of happiness that radiates within you. There is, I promise, you just need to learn to tune in before it's too late. Thank you for listening, and that's my presentation. Any questions? Yes. Um, do you really believe that the fear of public speaking is higher than the fear of do you personally believe? Do I personally believe?
Maybe not for me. I, 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 I enjoy living more than I'm worried about standing in front of talking to people. Whereas some people, I've seen people genuinely petrified. They've gotten sick, queasy, uncomfortable, and genuinely fled a room. The last thing they want to do is be in front of other people and risk being scrutinized in any way. So do I believe that it's a majority fear? Yes. Do I believe it's my personal fear? Um, piggyback off what she said, do you, um, do you think that the fear, uh, public speaking being a higher, or I guess a, a more fear of than death is because when people think of death, they think they're going to die a long time from now, so it's kind of in the back of their mind, whether uh, you on the other hand, public speaking, like, you can do that anytime. So if it's something that can happen at any time or you may have to do, it's kind of, you know, you're thinking about it, so. Uh, could you try to rephrase the question? Is it, do you think there's a correlation between death being something that's down the road and public speaking being something that can be, that can happen now is the reason why people fear public speaking more than death? I'd have to agree with you, because it's that immediate moment where you can't necessarily avoid it. Whereas people can, well essentially, you know, pretend death isn't there. Especially with our society, we definitely sugarcoat things. In the news media, you don't see a post-mortem picture of anything. All you see is people in their prime happy. It kind of allows you to forget that death even exists. And for the most part, you don't deal with it until you see someone on their deathbed or you're on life support. Yes? Now, I remember uh, the exact moment I kind of sat down and realized this all will soon end. Not soon, but you know, in the theory of time, soon. Um, and the, the anxiety that took over. Do you remember that exact moment for yourself? If not, have you come to terms with the idea of death, or are you still kind of fighting the, uh, the thought? Um, for me, when I first kind of came to that moment where I was like, oh my gosh, this is this is a finite amount of time. It's, it doesn't last forever. Well, it's probably when my grandfather passed with pancreatic cancer. I watched him do the fight, go through the whole experience, and it was a, it was not necessarily the prettiest thing. He held himself with dignity, though. But for me, that kind of made me realize that there's, there's a moment where it's just going to end. No matter how strong you are, no matter how tough you are, how proud, how stubborn, there's, there's a point where you just you throw in the towel, whether you want to or not. And for me, how I kind of came to terms with it was actually joining the military. And the funny part was, it was what someone told me, it was one of the, one of the Air, Sergeant Airborne, and it was just one of the randomest things. Talk about how we're nervous jumping out of this plane for the first time. And he said, yeah, I used to be nervous too, except for then I realized if I jump and my chute doesn't open, it's going to be a quick death. I was like, huh, yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. You, you do it, and either it works or it doesn't. That's the end. I guess for me, I was just like, huh, I'll just